thanks so much Sorry, for joining us it's such a pleasure to have you with us today and heartiest congratulations for making it to the list of emerging leaders thank you so much okay so but really would love to know you know briefly about your journey and uh, you know what are the key milestones and experiences that have really shaped your path and got you here so all put together, I, uh, as a professional, I have eight years of work experience, and I most of my work experience cut across the specialist areas, COE as we call it. So, org design, total rewards, HR analytics, and uh, I think that has been that has shaped who I am as a professional. To be honest, as a professional, I put a lot of emphasis on technical acumen. Right, uh, especially in the formative stages of my career. So th those experiences have really helped me get where I am, especially now that I am in a head HRBP kind of role as a generalist. Um, unlike a lot of other individuals who might start with generalist roles, uh, my journey has been uh, technical acumen backwards, as a result of which that adaptation has been very easy for me because as an HR generalist and a senior one at that, one gets um, exposure to a wide variety of problems. And often if you don't have the tech technical acumen, you, it might lead to suboptimal solutions. Because I think I have the technical acumen because of those past experiences, it has really helped. Overall, if you have to boil it down to two or three seminal events that help me shape who I am, firstly is my academic underpinning, admission into XRI Jamshedpur 2013. So I'm a 2013-15 alumnus. That helped me get a strong grounding in, in management science. Right. Uh, moreover, it also helped me get uh, good employment opportunities because XRI has a pride of place in the HR fraternity. Second is, and which is most important, is even after the academic setting, um, I got the exposure to high impact COA rules at a very early stage in my career. So let us see, even in my second year experience in Vodafone, and I'm really thankful to that experience. I was in an org design project uh, which involved outsourcing our entire network function uh, that involved concepts like job leveling, uh, things that people pretty, uh, how should I put it, seasoned veterans, they often get a time, uh, they often do not even get a chance for such kind of projects. I really love that exposure. And the third thing is exposure to people management early, relatively early in my career. I think that was in my fourth year. Uh, let's say, so I've been out of eight years, I guess I've been, it's been four years that I've been a people manager. Uh, technical acumen backed with the ability to coach has helped me drive large initiatives. And I think that has helped me be become better as an HR professional and will be more reliable. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sorry, for sharing this. I think it's a very, very interesting journey that you've had and with various milestones that you just mentioned. So really great to know. So the next question is to know about your core values. So what are the fundamental principles that guide your actions and decision making? Cool. Uh, so what influences my decision making is also rooted in organizational psychology, which is a subject um, that most HR professionals should be, in my view, adept at. Uh, as an HR business partner, the first and foremost thing is organizational justice. Uh, given that I'm responsible for a number of people decisions of reasonably high impact, it's important that the notion of justice, which is just procedural justice, distributive justice, and interactional justice, they are pervasive in the way I take decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Second is quality orientation. Uh, given that I come from a COE background, uh, I think that has been embedded in me to take high quality decisions which are based on strong theoretical underpinning. Third is ethics. So I try to approach decisions based on first principles instead of having an end outcome in mind because in my view that helps me arrive at a decision where let's say there is a negotiation happening that decision also is a result of mutual trust instead of somebody using positional power and just driving their agenda. So these are three broad principles that I use. Wow, very, very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that. And now let's come talk about your success mantra. So what are the strategies or beliefs that have really contributed in your achievements? Hmm. Uh, again, learning. I think the primary bit that has helped me so far is A, uh, the hunger to learn and learn more. I'm never really satisfied with where I am currently, even if I feel that I'm at a relatively better position compared to my peer group. So one is seeking what is the best form of learning available for my subject, be it in the form of certifications, be it in the form of peer groups. Um, second is finding opportunities to put that theory into practice. 
third is having a group of peers and which I'm thankful of because of my background with uh, XRI, I have a good network and finding out and remaining abreast of what is relevant in the industry. Uh, all of these segue well together because I have a reasonably strong theoretical underpinning, at least in my opinion. It helps me separate the grain from the shaft in, the, in terms of what is a management fad what, versus what is management science. All three put together, I think, gives me a reasonable framework, I would say, to make good decisions, which is ultimately what management is all about. So true, so true, absolutely. And learning so far, I mean, definitely is very, very important. So learning and also putting it into practice is extremely important and having a great network, you know, you can look up to. So offer support and seek help. Everything goes together. So that's very, very I've interesting. I've been blessed, actually. I've been blessed with uh, ever since, uh, right from my days. I've uh, Over the course of eight years, I've just had, I've worked with two employers. One is with Vodafone and uh, the other is with the Amazon joint venture that I'm currently working for. Yeah. I've been blessed with great managers, actually, who have given me autonomy and who have coached me and uh, in the best way to arrive at decisions. So there was always something to learn for which I'm deeply indebted to absolutely absolutely so what is your success mantra yeah uh success mantra if i would say is just keep find a way to learn and not be restricted to your organization uh, i think uh, there is a common malaise at least in the hr or maybe even in the management fraternity that common sense is always the best uh, it's not always the case because at times common sense alone might lead you to suboptimal decisions read read good sources, academic research journals, uh, good books by noted organization psychologists that will tell you what uh, where the subject has gone and whether there is a gap between yeah. practice, between corporate practice and what is really at the cutting edge. Once that gap, as a practitioner, if one is aware of that gap, that is where you can drive interventions. Yeah. So, so I mean, this is a beautiful learning. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, so that has been my mantra, if you will, for quite some time. It's something that I would suggest any person who approaches me for any kind of advice. So uh, there are plenty of sources available on the internet, Acad academia.edu, find good research papers, find good yeah. books, just keep yourself abreast. Yeah, yeah. Now that's very important and a very valid point. In fact, very well connected to the next question as well, which is what is there an advice that you would like to give, uh, you know, to upcoming HR leaders and young HR leaders? What words of wisdom or guidance would you like to share? Find out organizations and find out managers who encourage you, who give you opportunities to excel, who stretch you instead of, especially early on in your career when, for example, you don't suffer from physical limitations of old age. That will help you learn. Once you learn, try to reflect on the learning and whether it was optimal or not. How do you do that? That is by reading. Re reading helps you reflect and understand, in my view at least, whether what you performed was, was it the best way to go about it? If not, what, where was the gap? Understand the gap so that the next time you do it, you do it better. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And there are no failures this way. So there are only learnings that you have throughout. So very, very well said. Uh, thank you so much, Shorik, for sharing, uh, you know, your viewpoints, your perspectives. And definitely, I think what you're doing is uh, you're setting an example, you know, for others uh, to follow. Thank you so much for joining thank us. You. And sure. It was a pleasure you. hosting you. Keep rising, keep shining, and keep inspiring. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your for your time, Aditya.